The Milburn Stone Theater presents an MST audio production of The Tsar and Tsaritsa, a dramatic interpretation of the personal letters of the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, his wife, Tsaritsa Alexandra, and their families during the last era of the Romanov dynasty. Episode 2, 1894. While it seemed that all hopes for Nikki's proposals were lost, the wedding of Alex's brother Ernie would bring Nikki to see Alex face to face for the first time since her refusal. Alex to Xenia, March 30th, 1984, Darmstadt. Darling Xenia, a tender kiss, best thanks for your dear letter and the charming photos. It seems too funny to think that you are about to be married. God bless you, my sweet child, and may you have every possible happiness. Darling, why did you speak about that subject which we never wanted to mention again? It is cruel as you know it can never be. All along I have said so. Do you think it is not already hard enough to know you are hurting first the person whom of all others you would long to please? But it cannot be. He knows it. And so do not, I pray you, speak of it again. I know Ella will begin again. But what is the good of it? And it is cruel always to say I am ruining his life. Can I help it when to make him happy I should be committing a sin in my conscience? It is hard enough as it is, and beginning about it again is so unkind. You who have found what your heart has desired, think only kindly of me, though I am grieving you too. One worry and sorrow follows the other. In five days we are off to Coburg for Ernie's wedding. What my feelings are you can imagine. God grant they may be happy. She is such a dear. I am going to England for two or three months, as I would only be in their way here. The heat is great, but everything is so green and lovely, and all the fruit trees in bloom, too beautiful. We spend many hours in the woods. Goodbye, my little chicken. Many a loving kiss from your ever-devoted old Alex. Best love to Sandro. George, Duke of York to Nikki, April 9th, 1894, York Cottage, Sandringham. My dear old Nikki, I wish you and dear Alex every possible joy and happiness now and in the future. I am indeed delighted to think that everything is settled at last and that the great wish of your heart is at last accomplished. As I well know that for some years you have loved Alex and wished to marry her. I am quite certain that she will make you an excellent wife, and she is charming, lovely, and accomplished. I am also so glad that your engagement has taken place at Coburg, and I know it will have given Grandmama the greatest possible pleasure to be present on this happy occasion. She is very fond of Alex and has always told me how much she had hoped that someday she would marry you. So Ernie and Ducky are married, and Xenia and Sandro are engaged. What a lot of weddings there will be this year. You are all following my good example, you see. God bless you, dear Nikki. Ever your most loving cousin, Georgie. Nikki to Empress Marie, April 10th, 1894, Palais Edinburgh, Coburg. My dearest darling mama, I don't know how to start this letter, as there is so much I want to say that the thoughts are all mixed up in my head. So this is how my affair turned out, thanks to the mercy of our Lord God, when I was convinced the outcome was completely hopeless. The day after our arrival here, I had a long and extremely difficult conversation with Alex, during which I tried to explain to her that she could not do otherwise than to give her consent. She was crying the whole time, and only answered from time to time in a whisper, No, I cannot. I just kept on repeating and insisting on what I already said earlier. Although this conversation went on for more than two hours, it ended in nothing, because neither of us will give in to the other. The next morning, we talked more calmly. I gave her your letter, and after that, she could not say anything. This was already a sign for me of the final stage of the conflict, which had arisen within her from our first conversation. The marriage of Ernie and Ducky was the final drop in her cup of suffering and hesitation. She decided to talk to Aunt Mishin. This was also Ernie's advice. As she was leaving, he whispered to me that there was hope of a happy outcome. I have to say here that during the whole of those three days, I suffered terrible anxiety 
All the relatives kept asking me in confidence about her and expressing their sympathy in the most touching way, wished me all the best. But all this provoked in me even greater fears and doubts that perhaps things would not be resolved. The emperor also tried. He even had a talk with Alex and on that morning of April 8th brought her to us at home. She then went to Aunt Mishin and soon afterwards came into the room where I was sitting with the uncles, Aunt Ella and Wilhelm. They left us alone and the first thing she said was that she agreed. Oh God, what happened to me then? I started to cry like a child and so did she. Only her expression immediately changed. Her face brightened and took on a war of peace. No, I cannot tell you how happy I am, and yet how sad that I am not with you and that I cannot embrace you and dear Papa at this moment. My whole world has been transformed in everything. Nature, people, places all seem attractive, good, and full of joy. I simply was not able to write. My hands were trembling, and from then on, in fact, I did not have a single free moment. We had to do what the rest of the family were doing. There were hundreds of telegrams to be answered, and I was dying just to sit alone in a corner with my dear bride. She has completely changed and become gay, amusing, talkative, and tender. I do not know how to thank God for his great mercy. That same day, we went to a service in Aunt Marie's church. She and all the sisters were present. At Alex's request, we go to Darmstadt for one night, now she will see her native land with quite other feelings. I had asked you if I could stay for two weeks, but now I think I will come earlier, towards the middle of Easter week. I so want to spend a little more time quietly with her. But now, my dear mama, I must finish. I am enclosing her letter to you. I embrace dear papa and all the others. Your Nikki. Empress Marie to Nikki, April 10th, 1894, Gachina. My dear sweet Nikki, words cannot express with what delight and great joy I received this happy news. I almost felt faint I was so overjoyed. But how sad not to be with you, my beloved Nikki, at this great moment in your life, not to be able to kiss you and bless you from the depths of my soul. May God shower you both with his blessings and grant you every possible happiness on this earth. This is my most fervent and ardent prayer for you, my Nicky. I was so happy and shed tears of joy and emotion and ran to announce this happy news to Papa, first of all, then to Xenia and Sandro, and there was nothing but shouts of joy and real jubilation. We had parted with such a bad and desperate feeling on the evening of your departure that my heart bled as I saw you go and my thoughts and prayers never left you. But thank God the good Lord has arranged everything for the best, and now you are happy and content, and we are overcome with joy knowing you are to be so happy. Your greatest wish has been granted at last, after so many vicissitudes. Also, we are waiting, with an almost febrile impatience, for the first letter with the details of how it all happened. You cannot imagine how awful and painful it is to be separated from you at a moment like this and how envious and furious I am that the uncles and aunts were present, while Papa and myself, who are closest to you, were excluded. It's horribly sad and hard for us. I kiss you, my dear children, with all my heart, and pray that God will bless and always keep you in, under his sacred protection. I hope Alex will look upon me as a loving mother, who will receive her with open arms like her own dear child. Papa embraces you warmly and lovingly and wishes you both happiness and every good thing. May God keep you your ever-loving Mama. Xenia to Nikki, April 10th, 1894. Gachina. Darling Nikki, you cannot imagine my joy. I am terribly happy and you will understand why. Imagine when I last asked Mama yesterday when our wedding was going to be, and Mama answered, I don't know, and repeated it twice. I was simply mad. It's unbelievable. You can't treat people like things. But when I asked her about your wedding, Mama replied that there was no reason to wait. In other words, the sooner the better. Now, tell me where there is any justice. But I am, of course, overjoyed for you. Empress Marie to Nikki April 14, 1894, Gachina.
My sweet, dearest, darling Nicky, I thank you with all my heart for your dear, kind letter, which I received yesterday with Aunt Meachin, and which moved me to tears. Thank you, thank you for each affectionate word which goes straight, straight to my heart, which is so full of love for you, and which is open like a flower to receive your dear Alex, whom I already regard as my own daughter, and whom I await with such impatience. It was such a joy yesterday morning to receive your two dearest letters. Tell Alex that I was so touched by hers, only she must not call me auntie, mamma or mother dear. This is what I am for her now. Poor children, what moral tortures you have been through. It was a real battle. But God helped you to prevail and to win this great victory, and now he will bless you both, I am sure. May he hear your prayers and grant you every happiness in this world, and thereby our happiness, and that of all our dear land. I am sending you a very little Easter egg. Forever your loving Mama. Alex to Empress Marie, April 18, 1894, Palais Edinburgh. Darling Mother dear, Nikki tells me I may call you so. Oh, thank you so much. You are too kind and good to me. How can I thank you and dear uncle enough for the magnificent present you were so awfully kind as to send me? It is much too beautiful for me. It gave me quite a shock when I opened up the case, saw those beautiful stones. I thank you ever so much for it and kiss your hands most tenderly. I feel so proud to have your lovely order and am most grateful and thankful for it and the sweet egg and dear letter all touched me deeply. Only two days still, and then darling Nicky and I have to part. It makes me feel miserable, but I am sure that his little mother dear is longing for him. You will let him come to England this summer, won't you? Because it would be too hard to be parted so long, and Grandmama is looking forward to his visit so much. He has quite won her heart, as he has of all those who know him. He is in church now, and whilst he is kneeling there, my thoughts and prayers are with him. With God's help, I will soon learn to love his religion, too, and I am sure he will help me. But I will not bother you with a long letter. With very fondest love to dear father, I am, darling little mother dear, your deeply affectionate and dutiful child, Alex. Alex to Xenia, April 18, 1894, Palais Edinburgh. My darling little Xenia, I send you my most tender thanks for the sweet little egg and lovely little brooch. I was deeply touched at your having thought of me. The others are all in church, and I am sitting alone, so use the opportunity for writing to my chicken. Alas, only two days and then we part. I feel miserable at the idea. But what can't be cured must be endured. You are to be envied seeing Sandra every day, and I shall not see my Nikki for over a month. I cannot describe my happiness. It is too great. I can only thank God on my knees for having guided me thus. And what an angel the dear boy is. How glad you will be to have him back again. You will write to me sometimes, won't you, if Sandro is not the whole day with you? Give him my love. We went for a drive yesterday in the rain, but not to the Rossinau. Today I have no doubt we shall go there. I am going to spend a night in Darmstadt on my way to England, so I shall see the young couple again. They look so happy and content, but it does seem too funny Ernie being married. It is so damp today that I have had to have a fire made. Now enough for today. With many a loving kiss, I remain ever your very loving old hen, Alex. Nikki to Empress Marie, April 18th, 1894. Palais Edinburgh, Coburg. My dearest darling mama, words cannot express how happy your kind letter made me. Above all, you are both happy and pleased. Now I also am completely happy and calm. Alex is delightful and has been completely transformed from her state of constant sadness. She is so touchingly sweet with me that I am utterly enchanted. We spend whole days sitting together, and when the family goes on an outing, we follow on behind alone, in a little carriage with one horse, either she or I drive. She nearly fainted when I gave her your wonderful present. 
She wore it for the first time last night when there were guests for dinner. I have written to you so little and so seldom, dear Mama, partly because we will soon see each other, but also because there is really no free time. We are completely worn out by the telegrams. Alex and I write them together and help each other. Up to now, we have received 220 of them. <laughs> we spent the day in Darmstadt quietly with Ducky and Ernie. The reception the previous night was very grand and yet quite touching. Certainly, they all love her there, and they all have the fondest memories of her. But now I must end, my dear mama. Alex and I embrace you warmly and tenderly. Once again, I thank you for your dear letter and the little eggs. May the Lord keep you both. Until our next meeting, your Nikki. Nikki to Alex, April 20th, 1894, this sad Wednesday. Calais, Edinburgh, Coburg. My sweet, darling, beloved Alex. Oh, it was too awful saying goodbye like that, with a lot of people looking on from all sides. I shall never forget the sweet, sad, and yet smiling expression of your angelic face looking out of the window as the train was beginning to move. To know that you had to spend nine hours in that small compartment nearly by yourself uh, was cruel to me, and especially the thought that I was of no help anymore. The coming home was more than unpleasant, and when I came into my room where you had just been a few minutes before, I could not keep back my tears. But then, <laughs> what a delightful surprise on my table in the bedroom. There lay a note from you, my darling little girl. <laughs> Thank you, and thank you for the soothing, comforting words that you wrote in it. <laughs> really, those few lines did me good. Certainly, my love, I shall speak with Papa about that question, and I beg you always to remember that in everything where you shall need my help, you may be sure that I shall be there by your side, and that also a deeply loving and thankful heart, wherever it is, will always be in time with yours, my sweet one. All these days I was so overcome with joy and happiness being by my darling's side that I could not say or tell you the hundredth part of what I might have spoken. I feel very deeply, and then I cannot get the words out. It, it, it is stupid and tiresome, but so it is. I hope that this shyness or whatever it is will pass for the next time we meet. We shall know more of each other than in the beginning. <sighs> How impatient I am for the moment when I can again press my lips to your sweet, soft face. Alex, my own darling, you don't know how you have changed me by stretching out a fond hand and by making me rise up to you, the emblem of real, pure love and faith. No, do not think that these are vain words. No, they come from my innermost feeling of admiration, trust, and love that you have inspired me with. I must repeat again the same words I told you, my precious little girl, the day of our engagement, that all my life belonged to you, and that I could never be enough thankful to you, dearest, for all you have done, are doing, and going to do for me. May God help and protect you on the difficult beginning of your path. My prayers, blessings, and thoughts are constantly with you, my darling little thing. Of course, they all went to Rosa now and I was tracked with the rest. Ella and Sandro drove in our pony carriage. We drove up our nice road along the hill down to Rosenau where we took tea. Before that, we took a walk. <laughs> I saw our bench where the hare came once, and I went along the stream, looked at the grotto, <laughs> found these primroses on the side of the hill, <laughs> and felt suddenly that I loved that place dearly. The weather was too fine for the occasion. The sun was bright, but I was so lonely. I do hope the passage was a smooth one and that my sweet little owl did not suffer and is not too much tried by her journey. Give my best love to Granny. And now goodbye, my own darling, beloved Alex. God bless you once more. Forever your own deeply loving and thankful Nikki. Alex to Nikki, April 20th, 1894, Darmstadt. My own precious Nikki, darling, I am lying in bed but cannot go to sleep before I have written to you, as speak alas, we cannot. 
Oh, how I miss you. It is not to be described, and I long for the two hours all alone with you. No goodnight kiss and blessing. It is hard, but our thoughts will meet, won't they? Your dear telegram made my heart rejoice, and I have got it lying near me. What a delight it will be to find your letter in Windsor. And there you are, rattling away in the beastly train, whilst I am comfortably installed in my bed in my own sweet house. It reminds me all so much of last week. How glad I am that you have been here and know my rooms a bit. I want you badly. Forever and ever, your dear photo stands before me and makes me feel lonely. I shall write tomorrow from Windsor. This has been an episode of The Tsar and Tsaritsa, a product of the Milburn Stone Theatre at Cecil College, produced and edited by William Bryant. This episode features the voices of Faith Sullivan, Michael Anderson, Lily Wirth, Kate Holden, Regina Rose, and Tom Worthington. For more details, please visit milburnstone.com.